Hello my dear friends, you're in the military summary channel and this short video we're going to discuss the most important events that took place during the previous night of the local time. First we're going to start with Kherson. Today, this morning we go to the local time, of course we got a lot of interesting updates from this sector. First we're going to start with Gola Pristin, the settlement that located on the south of Kherson. Uh, this is the Gola Pristin. Uh, today we got uh, the previous 24 hours, we got some video confirmations from the Ukrainian side, how the Ukrainians were bombing and attacking the Russian positions in this area. And the most interesting geolocation is the video in the in, on this island, on the south of the river, like Padova Pratoka, this one. The, the video quality is not very good, but the author of this video claims that uh, the Ukrainians discovered the Russian positions in this part of the islands and start bombing and shelling the Russian positions. So we are using these two videos to geolocate the real Russian positions, the, the territory that is under Russian control. So if we receive more updates from this bridgehead, we will color this island in the red color. So this is the, the in, in update about this territory. Now we are moving to Kazachi Lahiri, the settlement that uh, Ukrainians during the previous uh, few days were uh, made an attempt to capture the settlement. And uh, this morning we got so, at least more proofs and more updates from different Russian sources, military experts, that Ukrainians did manage to cross the river, Dnieper River, and to establish a local operational foothold on the Russian side of the Dnipro River. And at least the Russian military expert Liber, Liber confirms this piece of information. So basically, during the previous days, uh, during the previous week, this week the Ukrainians made an a lot of attempts uh, to, uh, to uh, land on the Russian side of the river. There were clashes in the Kazachi Lahiri itself, uh, but uh, those attacks were repelled and the Ukrainians were forced to step back. And there was, as I understand, there were at least two attempts, two attacks from the Ukrainian side. The first one was in the direction of Kazachi Lehri, that was the secondary attack, and the primary attack was a little bit to the south. And while the Russians were spending time trying to force the Ukrainians in, in the east western part of Kazachi Lehri to step back, the western group uh, spent those, that time to create foothold, to prepare trenches, to prepare fortifications and strongholds in this area. As soon as the Ukrainians got information that uh, the first group managed to create a bridgehead, the group from Kazachi Lahiri retreated, withdrawal their positions and moved to the islands. After that, the Russians changed their focus and started attacking and bombing the Ukrainian positions among the forest lines on uh, the western part uh, of this bridgehead. But yet the Russians haven't managed to force the Ukrainians to step back. So this is the situation in Kazachi Lahiri. The Ukrainians continue sending more and more reinforcements and reserves in this area. Basically, the main Ukrainian forces are located on these, on the islands between the banks and using just a small boats there to transferring more and more reserves. And the main purpose, of course, to hold the positions as long as possible. Furthermore, the Ukrainians try to suppress and to attack the Russian positions with artilleries. And not and the main purpose, of course, is not to allow the Russians to start storming this area. So basically, we see that Ukraine try to repeat the situation that we saw in the vicinity of Antonov Bridge. When the Ukrainians have landed and after that, when the Russians were trying to storm those positions, the Ukrainians start bombing and shelling the Russian offensive forces. So the Ukrainians do have a very powerful artillery support from their bank of the river and the main reason of that is the Ukrainian bank of the river is located on the hill and the Russian side of the river is located in the lowland. So that's why the Ukrainians from their positions on their bank of the river can see everything that happens on the Russian side and the Russians don't have such possibilities. Of course, with drones they can do everything, obviously. Uh, furthermore, the Ukrainians continue publishing videos how they continue supporting their forces on this on the Russian side of the river, trying to attack the Russian trenches and fortifications with the drones. On this video, we will not see video because of violence and other bodies. And um, on this video, we saw how the Ukrainians uh, with drone attack the Russian forti um, strongholds, trying to pin down the Russian forces. Now we are moving further to area of bridgehead to the Bradley Square. Uh, if you remember yesterday, we got uh, the first photo confirmation that Ukrainians managed to enter the settlement in the northern part. And uh, starting today, more and more sources confirm that information or at least spread that, um, that photo saying that probably the Ukrainians managed to achieve some success in this area. And uh, obviously, uh, we haven't received any updates from the Russian side that they managed to force the Ukrainians to step back. So basically, as I understand, we will keep the situation as is. The only thing we have is from the Ukrainian side 
right? Uh, some Telegram chats, some Telegram messages, some updates uh, from the closed Telegram chats and so on about the losses of the Russians in the settlement, about killed some officers in that settlement and in this settlement. So basically, we have some evidence that the Ukrainians are in the northern part and that the battle of Arbotina has started. From the other side, from the Russian side, we got some confirmations that a lot of Ukrainian officers were killed during that operation. For example, the commander of 47th Mechanized Brigade was killed during one of those operations of storming of Robotina. The commander of 118th Mechanized Brigade also were killed as a result of those clashes. And I remind you that 47th, 118th is the main brigade that took, take, took place in those operations, including 46th Brigade, of course, 46th Air Mobile Brigade that was redeployed here recently. Furthermore, the uh, Ukrainians published the video how they were bombing the, and attacking the Russian positions, the Russian trenches uh, in the vicinity of Novopokrovka on the way to the Verbova. We're using this video just to confirm the geolocation of Ukrainian positions. So, as I expect today, the Ukrainians will continue attacking in direction of Rabotina, trying to uh, dig deeper in this settlement and trying to force the Russians to step back. Currently, the Ukrainians have possibilities to continue their offensive operation from the north because they have some bridge at some position there and of course the Ukrainians will try to attack Robotina uh, from the east all over the combat line through the fields and so on so the situation is very difficult for the Russians but as you can see the main Russian trenches in this area of course are located on the western side of uh, Robotina and on the southern part of Robotina so basically the Russians haven't lost their main positions Robotina itself of course has some value but not uh, such a value as the trenches and strongholds on the west and on the south of that settlement now we're moving to Rajaina we also got some updates about the Ukrainian progress in the settlement the Ukrainians published the video of a storming process of the south and the central part of that settlement to Rajaina. On this video we see how two Ukrainian tanks, this is the first tanks on the bottom right corner and another tank on the bottom left corner were moving in direction of the central line and from the, that line the Ukrainians were attacking uh, with tanks the Russian positions in the southern part of that settlement. We see a lot of explosions, a lot of fires on the Russian side. So basically this video confirms that the Ukrainians during the previous 24 hours managed to penetrate the Russians' defense belt in the northern area and to force the Russians to step back in the central and the southern part of that settlement. Furthermore, the Ukrainians continue or increasing their pressure from, Raja, from Staromayorska and the Ukrainians' attacks continue their pressure from the north. Uh, we see maybe that was the reason why the Russians stepped back from the northern part because of increasing the pressure from the west So they did just basically didn't want to be encircled and that's why they took a decision to just step back towards more reliable positions Anyway, assume that within the next 60 uh, Probably 72 hours the Russians will be forced to leave this settlement. The Russians are not counter-attacking There is very difficult operations for them. They prefer to fight till the last ruins and after that to withdraw their positions towards uh, the south. So the second, the next town that the Ukrainians will fight for is Zavitna Bajania, the settlement that located on the Russians on the western side of Mokroyala River. The next settlements would be Novodonetska, Kremenchik, and of course the Ukrainians will start their offensive operation in the direction of Priyutina. The thing is that they need, of course, to maintain the front line and to short the, the combat line in this area. Uh, furthermore, the Russians reported that as a result of clashes in this area, the Ukrainians lost another commander of 38th uh, Marine Brigade that also took part, this is the 38th Brigade, that also took part in the operation of capturing or attacking direction of Rajaina. Uh, now we are moving further, we are going to Avdiivka area. The Russians continue using the guided bombs in the settlement. Yesterday we got a very interesting update that as a result of clashes in this area, the Russians managed to establish um, by the way, this is the second confirmation that the Russians managed to establish the uh, fire control over the road, main road between Orlovka and Lastochkina. And currently this area is under complete Russian artillery control. And uh, so th that, uh, si this situation leads to the reducing of Ukrainian usage, of Ukrainian possibilities to um, supplying supporting of the settlement. And from another side, we see that the Russians continue bombing Avdiivka with guided bombs. 
and uh, during the pre just during the previous months we got uh, at least three or four video confirmations geolocated confirmations of continuous process of bombing the settlement uh, there are a lot of fortifications and a lot of strongholds of the Ukrainian forces in this area if we increase the number of days just from the beginning of August we're gonna see just uh, just in this area the Russians were using uh, the on this video we see how the Russians destroyed the Ukrainian radar this is the Ukrainian radar or communication like equipment on this video we see the usage of guided bombs by the Russian forces a little bit to the west we see that as a result of usage also of guided bombs the Russians managed to ruin the entire building a very high building that Ukrainians were using as a navigation center as a uh, probably as an area that Ukrainians uh, could use for coordinating their artillery system. So as we see, uh, there are still, of course, a lot of buildings. The Russians are not in a hurry. On the northern area, there were also another video of usage of guided bombs from by the Russian forces. Uh, so as you can see, artillery shelling. So the Russians basically try to reduce as much as possible the rush the ukrainians defense like possibilities capabilities in this area so that means that um, it is not very soon when the russians are going to launch a real offense operation this settlement because there are still lots of strongholds and uh, so there are still a lot of job to do for the russian forces before beginning something bigger than they do right now when talking about Klishev, Kobachmut, Artyomovsk during the previous night, we haven't received nothing. Probably there were some clashes, of course, but nothing geolocated. And the same situation about Kupin's front line. The Ukrainians just published few videos of bombings of Dibrova, nothing special, just Russian reserves and positions to local MO depots were under Ukrainian attack that the Russians were using for their forces in Tarskoe salient. And the same situation in the vicinity of um, uh, Raiharotka. The Ukrainians published the video how they managed to discover the Russian tank from hidden position that the Russians were using to attack the Ukrainian, the Ukrainian forces on the Ukrainian side of Zheribets river. And the Russians also published the video how they managed to discover and destroy Ukrainian artillery system um, star S somewhere in the vicinity of Kupinsk. So currently, as you can see, the Russians continue their counter artillery duties, trying to suppress the Ukrainian artillery system and to prepare their forces before the next wave of attack in direction of Kupinsk, in direction of Sinkovka. So this is about everything all about the situation on the ground, but we have some international updates. And probably before the international updates, of course, the most important piece of news is that the Ukrainians uh, uh, have uh, dismissed, uh, have fired every single regional chiefs of Ukrainian military recruitment. And because of corruptions, of course, they, these units uh, uh, earned a lot of money on the Ukrainian lives by sending this or that people to the front line and some as i know as i know according to information i have and uh, to get some uh, some permission not to be uh, mobilized in ukraine cost around five thousand dollars so imagine yourself how much money you can earn on this business and a lot of uh, like these uh, like military re chiefs recruitment chiefs earned a lot of money and there was even a, uh, like a situation when the Ukrainians authority discovered that one of those from Odessa that a person from Odessa like military chief uh, like officer who was responsible for the main equipment in Odessa bought a house in Spain for 3 million euro so imagine yourself how much money he earned with the salary around his official salary is around probably 200 or 300 euro and he bought a house for 3 millions of euro so imagine yourself the level of corruption in Ukraine about this situation Furthermore, during the previous night, the Ukrainians made a massive drone attack, attack against Crimea. The Russians reported that they managed to shut down the drones and that uh, in, the Ukrainians haven't managed to get the, the, perp the things that they wanted. Uh, now let's move to the international updates. And first we're going to start, of course, with the United States of America. The White House reported that they continue, that they will continue supporting and supplying Ukraine in 2024. This year we expect the, the arrivals of the first Abrams on the territory of Ukraine. Probably in 2024 we're going to see the F-16s. The Joe Biden asked the Congress to get more 30 billions, 13 billion billions of dollars of helped military help of to Ukraine, and around seven more than seven 
seven billions of dollars for financing the economy support of Ukraine. So as you can see, the, the United States of America is planning to continue war in Ukraine and not just in the 2023, but in 2024 as well. Now we are moving to the Africa. We got also a lot of very interesting updates and the sources are saying that some clashes began in the, in the Mali, the ally of, uh, let's say, Niger. Uh, there are, according to information we have, the the Mali forces, Malian armed forces, with the with support of Wagner forces on the helicopters and Su-25, started fighting with some separatists in this in this settlement, and there was a very fierce clashes, according to information we have be between the settlements Timbuku and Ber. And um, so, and mainly the uh, like the fighters of Al Qaeda were is fight were fighting with the Russians with Mali forces, uh, and so as you can see, the Russians started already not just uh, the um, like some kind of like just redeployment in this area that they started training the forces of African countries like in Mali Niger already. Of course, before any clashes, it is it is very important to have experienced army. And before any fierce fightings, it is very important to give soldiers opportunity to fill the uh, to fill the air of the war. So probably the Russians started this practice in Mali, and this, of course, as I understand, this experience that Mali forces will obtain will help the these countries to fight against any intervention from the West. Furthermore, uh, the uh, there is a strike. There is a like civilian strike in the vicinity uh, of the France airport in the vicinity in the in the capital of Niger by the name of Niamey. So people from this country requires the French forces to leave the African continent, to leave Niger, and yeah, this is the requirements. And that's it for today. Military summary channel reminds you condemn any violence in the world. Thank you for watching. Subscribe to my channel. Put your likes to my Patreon, and have a good day. Bye bye.